All right. Welcome back into the Auburn Live Show. Appreciate everybody for joining us. Um, special guest today. Anybody who's listened to this show in the past certainly knows who he is. Anybody who's been an Auburn fan um, for a while knows who this is. Ben Leard. What's up, Ben? What's up, Hope, man? I'm happy to be here, buddy. I missed you. Yeah, man. I had to get you back on, man. I've, I've been I've been thinking about you. I got to get Ben on. And then uh, – and then our board started uh, when 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 things were kind of like hitting the fan that about that LSU game, fans were like, "I gotta know what Ben thinks. I gotta know what Ben thinks." We had people asking, so I said, "I'll get him on. I'll get him yeah. on." Um, all right, we're gonna jump into a bunch of stuff. Before we do, quick shout out to our uh, our our sponsor of the show, Session Cocktail, downtown Auburn, right there on Magnolia Avenue. Go check them out when you get a chance. Great happy hour drinks from four to six. I um, think they're having a big Halloween, Halloween type party on Tuesday nights. So if you get out and about and you got some crazy costumes, go by there and check them out. Session cocktail, uh, right there by Taco Mama. Great people. Um, appreciate their support of the show. Um, they just changed their menu up, so a lot of good drinks. Great place to go and chill and sit and in an environment that's not a crazy college bar environment where you're standing around. You're sitting. You got somewhere to sit um, and hang out. So. They also have, if you get there for some reason, you can't get in. They have a wait list you can get on to so pop over to Taco Mama or Hamilton's or something like that, eat, and then pop over there and have a drink, that kind of good stuff. So Session Cocktail, appreciate them um, as always. <clears throat> All right, Ben, let's jump into this. By the way, anybody who's listening, just sorry, I'm fighting a cold. Um, and so I'm just going to like do my best to ask questions, let Ben talk, um, which people would probably like anyway. Um, well, dude, I tell you what, if we'd had you on a week ago, <laughs> the tenor of this might be different. <clears throat> we got a little bit of positivity after the Mississippi state game, much, much needed win, but just, I'll kind of turn the floor over to you. I mean, what would have been your impressions of what you've seen this far? I'll, I'll, I'll say two questions. What, what have you been your impressions of what you've seen on the field and how have you then viewed that in the big picture, whether it's, you know, in terms of separating it from how Freeze is building the program, how how what's happening on the field is is shaping your perspective of Freeze as a head coach and as a um, builder of the program? So, you know, in the in the. In the two-part question, in all honesty, let, let's, let's start with present day. Let's start with, you know, how the season has gone, um, the production in certain situations, like thereof, you know, things, <clears throat> things of that nature. Because I, I think there is very much two sides to the coin. Um, Coach Freeze and or and, and his staff, they are – they are working with the athletes and the talent that they have in the locker room. And while, while the kids, they are of SEC talent, <clears throat> they obviously do not have the depth and, and in certain instances, the firepower that is needed to compete with the Georgias and the Alabamas, the Texas A&Ms and the LSUs of the world. <clears throat> so those types of things, <clears throat> I get you gave me your cold. Those types of things Sorry. are, you know, they are they are what they are, Hoke. And, you know, everyone with any sense of reality knew that going into it. Hugh was very vocal from the standpoint of, hey, we, we we've got to we've got to recruit, we got to recruit, we got to recruit, which is the name of the game. I don't care if you're the two time defending national champion. Where, you know, defensively, I, you know, I, I have been extremely proud of the of, of the defensive production and, and the way they have played thus far into the season versus LSU. It was a, a pretty substantial drop, but I think that's the case with anybody that LSU plays, quite frankly, uh, because of the number of weapons that they have and the way Jaden Daniels is playing. But offensively has been has been very very up and down it's been it's been quite frustrating to to watch um the whole <clears throat> the whole quarterback rotation is something that i 
I think they're trying to figure out what's going on. I, I think offensively, whether it's whether it's Coach Montgomery or Coach Freeze, whoever's calling the plays or whoever's responsible for what quarterback, that's that's their decision, you know, within the within the realms of the complex. But I am not a believer in a quarterback rotation at all. And I think it it interrupts the, the quarterback's flow of the game. It, it interrupts their ability to get into a rhythm. It interrupts the confidence. It disrupts the confidence that your teammates have in you being able to execute a particular play in a particular scenario. And it, it just it just screws things up. And, and you know, where where I really Ole Miss was extremely tough to watch. All, Auburn played well enough to win that game, in my opinion, especially defensively. But they they squandered opportunities, in my opinion, offensively. Um, and I, you know, watching when when Auburn had the football, I believe it was in the third quarter. They were on a, a relatively decent little drive. Robbie had, <clears throat> Robbie had run first and second down. They had a third and one close to midfield, I believe. And they get – an illegal substitution on third and one in a critical, critical time in the ball game. Illegal substitution strictly revolving around changing the quarterback. I, you're overthinking it. I, you, you're trying to you're trying to make it too complicated. Leave nine in the game. Let him play, or leave one in the game. I I don't care. Um. You know, so anyway, I, th- those types of things. Now, you go to Saturday versus Mississippi State. Hugh said early on in the week that Peyton's our guy. We're gonna we're gonna go with him, ride or die. And then I think it, I think it, it bode well. It, they, there there was consistency. I think probably statistically this was Peyton's best ball game of the year, from a percentage standpoint. Three touchdowns just over 200 yards passing. I think he had between 50 and 60 yards rushing, um, handled the football well, ran the offense extremely well. Um, the rushing attack was was very good. Jarquez had just shy of 150 yards on the ground, uh, two big explosive runs. Um, you know, so those types of things, I, my hope is that they're, they're laying groundwork for the remainder of the season for consistency and production. Defensively, I thought they did. I thought they played. I thought they played very well, um, and hopefully that continues because, you know, going to Vandy then to Arkansas will be will be a big test. And then obviously you ramp up for the last one of the year, which I I fully expect Auburn to come into that ball game seven and four, and it'll be it'll be one to watch. It'll be one to watch. But the, in the grand scheme of things, Hoke. Auburn is moving in the direction that they should move into. Hugh Freeze and his staff are recruiting their tails off. They are bringing young men on campus that I think are game changers. They are not giving up on kids that have committed elsewhere, especially those that are really close to Auburn. And they are they are able to tell the story of be somebody that changes the trajectory of a of a historic program, and there's reality in that, and that's a that's a big tale. That's a big thing for these for these kids to understand and have it have it kind of marinate on them a little bit, and hopefully that that allows them to you know allows it to to. To, to sink in with them and, and get them committed to Auburn and play and, and do some things. I, um, I think it's a situation too, where Hugh is able to tell the story and, and, and allow they've, they're, they're having enough success at this point through the season. I, in my opinion, I think they are, they are where they anticipated being. As, especially as a staff. Now, would they have liked to have won any of the four games that that have that have been a loss? Of course. But when you really when you really dive into it and look at it, it's they're they're right there where they were supposed to be. And in a year, in two years, it's not going to be satis- It's not going to be acceptable. And I think that's the that's the staff's mentality. But they've got to they've got to get their guys in. They got to continue to hone their system. 
And I have every bit of confidence that this staff will do that because of what they are showing on the recruiting trail. Two years ago, these kids wouldn't come on campus. Two years ago, or you know, a year ago, Brian Harson was he he, you know, he wasn't putting forth any effort. It's, it's quite the opposite. Auburn's a special place. If you get these kids on campus, while not every one of them are gonna are gonna commit, not every one of them are gonna come to Auburn. But by God, you stand a better chance once they get here because it will it will stick. And I think that's the thing. And and you know. The future is extremely bright. There is alignment from the AD. There's alignment from the coaching staff. There's alignment from a collective standpoint. And the kids, so long as they stay bought in, it's uh, it's going to be something that I believe, I truly believe that Hugh Freeze and his staff are going to win a lot of games here. And people just need to just 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 be patient. Don't be, don't, don't be passive. Don't, don't be accepting of mediocrity, but understand that there is a, it's a, it's a long game. It's a marathon and not a sprint. Me personally, I'm on board. I'm, I'm, I've been on board since he got here. And I, I think it's, I think it's a situation he's going to win championships. Yeah, I will give, I will give a lot of the Auburn fans, I think credit on the, not accepting mediocrity. I, I mean, just from the sense of our, our message board and people I talk to in general, um, I think that's one of the special things about Auburn is, well, it's it's sort of a double-edged sword. I mean, I don't think they ever accept mediocrity, which sort of leads to impatience, which leads to some of the issues that they've had over the years in the football program. But, you know, all things being considered, um, you know, they want to win. I think you make a good point about um, where they're supposed to be. You know, it's true. I mean, if if you look at odds and expectations, they are exactly record wise where you thought they would be. Um, and then toss in there two of those games. They were right there, Georgia yeah. and Ole Miss. Um, you know, so, you know, you got blown out at LSU and a and you know, so, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's about where they, you know, I thought I think where where people thought they should be. I think um, I think trying to think about what's happened on offense and and say okay, what is just kind of temporary in terms of personnel, and then or or is there something there that we should ask a question about? Will it linger or what's the future look like in terms of they'll figure out quarterback right? Like he's going to go continue to recruit the position. <clears throat> He'll go get a portal quarterback maybe and he might get another one. Um, you know, guys will come and go like personnel wise. I think the interesting question about around the offense is <clears throat> will, will he take back over play calling at some point or think about next year? Will he revert back on his decision to sort of give that up and go back to being the play caller? That's probably the biggest long-term big picture question I would have about the offense. A lot of what's happening is temporary and they're trying to piece it together this year, and it's frustrating to watch. Um, I'm with you on the rotating quarterbacks have been for a while. What do you think about Breeze taking back over play calling next year? Do, do you like his decision to to say, I need to focus on these a lot of these external things, collective recruiting, you know, all the logistics to build this thing while we're doing it, and I'm going to give up play calling for a minute. Um, do you think he should take that back? Do you, do you like his decision? What do you sort of make of that dynamic as, as we're going through this? I, I like it. I think, I think he came into this particular season <clears throat> with the mindset that, that Philip Montgomery would be the one to call the plays, be the OC. If, and, and I hate to say it this way, but if things go off the rails, he's the sacrificial lamb. If things go well, I made a great hire, right? But Hugh can also focus on the 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 pieces, the Jimmys and the Joes, the, you know, let me let me fill up my toy box kind of thing. Focus on the outside noise of recruiting collective, um, you know, the the networking piece that is so vital 
within not only within college football, but most importantly with at Auburn. It's it's huge. It's a huge piece of that this particular job. And, you know, Hugh is a genius play caller. And I, I, I do think at some point he will he will take that back over. Um, but right now I, I do I think that and I don't know this to be factual, but just perceptively, I think he has made the right decision to focus on the things outside of play calling specifically in order to build his program. And because if you ultimately think about it, a couple of weeks ago, it was stated that, you know, he really doesn't doesn't start thinking about on game day, doesn't start thinking about today's game until roughly 30 minutes before kick because he's focused on hosting the the recruits and, and entertaining them and, and and doing his thing. I love it. I love it. I think it's necessary. And I I find it hard to believe that anybody could tell me otherwise of what Kirby Smart does on Saturdays, what Josh Heupel does on Saturdays, what I guarantee you Nick Saban does as well. So that's that's part of the dynamic of of college football, especially in the SEC, that they've got to be diverse. They've got to be able to compartmentalize the responsibilities. And, you know, thus far, I think Hugh's done a Hugh's done a, an admirable job of that and, and he'll continue to do so. But at, at some point I think when he gets the toys in his toy chest that he is he has lined up, I think he'll go back to calling the shots. You know, and, and you're right, they're they're gonna you you anticipate them signing a quarterback every year as they should. They're gonna they you know where there are areas that they are really light that they really are are need playmakers are at the receiver position. I've been I've been pleasantly surprised by the production of the offensive line. I think they are I think they're playing well. Connor Lou played extremely well on Saturday in his first collegiate start. So I think those types of things are going to continue to come. They're recruiting offensive linemen, like just really, really good offensive linemen and not plugging and playing, you know, signing a 230-pound tight end and hoping to put 80 pounds on him and maybe he makes a left or right tackle. That's that, that, Those days are gone. Um, but, you know, running backs, they're in a great position. They're in a great spot. I just I think they need a couple of key pieces at the receiver position uh, to hold on to the the big commits that they have thus far this season. Turn a couple of other kids, um, and and again, I have confidence in the kids that are in the quarterback room as it sits. I I think Robbie Robbie can win games if they continue to develop him. I think Peyton Thorne can win games if they stay out of his way and let him let him play the game. I think Holden can play. Holden, in my opinion, Holden throws the ball better than anybody in the room. He, you know, it's just a matter of him getting an opportunity. They have not been in a position thus far this season to have been blowing the doors off of anybody, and the number three guy gets some meaningful snaps. So that's just that's part of that's part of the evolution of a of an SEC schedule. So you know they're 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 doing good things on the recruiting trail, they're going to get these kids in. I think Auburn, the fans, the atmosphere has been tremendous, which is a major, major part of recruiting these days. <clears throat> um, and I think, I think Auburn and the fan base, we need to realize that that is, we play our part. We, we play a major part in the recruitment of these young men. They see how fans react to goods, bads, and uglies. Um, they see the atmosphere. They feel the atmosphere. And, and the the biggest thing is do, do your part. And your our part is the environment that these young men are playing in, present players and potential future players. If we, if we continue to hold the atmosphere that's been here against Georgia, that was here versus Ole Miss, that was here Saturday versus Mississippi State, and you know what's going to show up in the Iron Bowl, those are those are things that are going to pay dividends for future years. All right, we'll continue the conversation. Let's pay some bills real quick. Toss uh toss that game time logo up there, Zach, if you got it. Um, GameTime.co sponsor of On Three Sports and Auburn Live Show. Uh, if you've never uh, used them, go check them out. It's a great app. 
great website to get last minute ticket deals, gametime.co, whether it's sporting events, comedy shows, concerts, whatever it might be. Um, awesome, awesome site to get last minute ticket deals. You can use the promo code War Eagle and it gets you 20 bucks off your first purchase of tickets. If you find tickets cheaper later on, they'll refund you if you can prove to them, hey, look, I got I got it from game time, but then I went and found these here and they're cheaper. They'll refund you some of that difference. Um, so go check out gametime.co. I know I get asked about tickets a lot um, and, and, and I can't always hook people up. And so gametime.co is a great place to go get some last minute ticket deals. So please check them out. Appreciate them being a part of the show. Um, you know, I was thinking about the quarterback rotation type deal, Ben. Did you, I'm trying to think of <clears throat> in, in 99, what, what was that? I vaguely remember, was there a rotation? What was it? Was it, you, know, you were the guy, was it 98 that there was, I'm trying to think of when you yeah, were there, there, if there was any kind of rotations going on there. I mean, the, the, the rotation, honestly, that existed in 98 was due to my, I, I just, I played like crap and, you know, Gabe was, Gabe was a true freshman that particular year mm -hmm. in 1998. They were, they were putting him in very, in the, in the game in various spots and he capitalized on it and, and ended up winning the, winning the starting job. So okay. there was really never any situational rotation. Um, you know, kind of what you, what you see in that, that two headed monster, it strictly was, Hey, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to put him in for a few series, see what goes on. And, and it, and it eventually ended up being where it was Gabe, Gabe's position in 1998. In 99, it was, you know, Gabe started that first game, did not play well. It was teed up for me to come in and luckily kind of never, I, I played well enough to never relinquish the position yeah. until I separated my shoulder and, you know, and then was out for the next handful of games. But Rotation wise, it was uh we just one, thankfully I I played well enough to not need it. Um, or we had enough offensive firepower that it just we just didn't need to throw that wrinkle in there. We had a had a decent rushing attack in ninety nine and especially in two thousand with Rudy. Oh yeah. And we had guys on the edges, man, that guys with Ronnie Daniels, you know, Marcel Marcel Willis, uh Reggie Worthy, Clifton Robinson. T. Rob, I mean, we had guys on the edges that can make plays, and um, Heath Evans. So, luckily for me, and I, I was a, I was a rhythm guy. I mean, I, I, I needed to feel what the game felt like. I, I, that was a big thing for me. I would have not been able to, I would have not been able to get a feel for the game or kind of the momentum if I was coming in and out. You probably will recall at the same time, Alabama was running a two quarterback rotation between Tyler Watts and Andrew Zow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in 99, it worked out for them. They won the SEC championship. Um, but just if you look at it, if you look at it holistically, it just, it just doesn't work. There's, if you got two, you don't have one. And I'm I'm a firm believer in that, and I, I think it's something that if, my, if if you talk to any offensive coordinator throughout the country, they would prefer to have one guy be the guy, and it's just it's just the way it works. Yeah, boy, <laughs> you'd love to have Ronnie Daniels. I'm trying to think of Ronnie Daniels in an RPO system where he oh. can get some one on ones. You know, where they've got to choose. Yeah, because in this system, if depending on the look, it could be just a, the same way they threw the the, you know, like to Shane Hooks on Saturday, right? Um, you'd have a. I mean, you did that just checking off, going, okay, you're gonna play one on one. Toss it up to Ronnie. Man, it was it was so fun. I I, I had. I had the opportunity on Saturday to to talk to a fellow that played for Arizona State. He was in town visiting with a buddy of mine, and he played with Pat Tillman and and Plummer and those guys at Arizona State. And we got to talking about for some way coincidentally he knows Noel Mazzoni, and we we were talking about our our offensive philosophy back in '99 and 2000. And I said, well, I said, man, I. I was slow as Christmas. I was not athletic. 
I, I, I had to beat somebody with my decision making and, and understanding of the offense and most importantly, understanding what a defense is going to do. I said roughly 80 percent of our offense was what we were called, what we would call in the huddle was check with me. We come to the line of scrimmage and based on the personnel, I'd make the play call. And thankfully, I had a center in Cole Kubelik that really understood. He was, he, as you you know, you watch him today on on, you know, on SEC and ESPN. He's he's a savant when it comes to understanding what a what a front seven is going to do. So he and I really pl- played off one another to, you know, to to put ourselves in the best position. And and luckily, I had guys that could make the plays that that when we called on them, they could make the plays. I'll tell you another thing it did is it kept everybody on their toes. You know, you go back and look in 99 and 2000, we would leave a game and there could be nine, 10 guys with catches. There was, it was never a, you know, a three guy, you know, three receiver with six catches a piece or whatnot. And so we just played the hot hand. We played, you know, you, you give me a, you give me a 10 yard slant or a, or a six yard out to the, to the Z or to the X, or I'm going to put this guy in motion and it opens him up or whatever the scenario is, that's the dude I'm going to throw it to. And lucky, luckily enough for me, they were good enough playmakers to sustain and continue drives. And that was really, it was, it was, I mean, I hate to, I hate to belittle anything that we, that we were able to do successfully, but man, it was fun. It was about as backyard of football as you can get, and we <laughs> we drew it up in the dirt on the spot, and it made for a, it made for a lot of fun. Come Saturdays, yeah, that's that's been my take on on Peyton just from um, just from watching him. Is he seems very much like a rhythm guy um, that he's better. I mean, if you go back to the Cal game when they needed the touchdown drive. It started there. That last touchdown drive, there was urgency, and they needed to make it happen, and he yep. and he made it happen. He made some good throws, uh, and they scored. And I think from that point on, there's been other instances where, he, for for me, Peyton's a guy that needs to be in there. He needs to feel a little bit of urgency. He needs to have a little bit of rhythm. Um, and I think nothing they've done so far has helped him. Slow the tempo down, that doesn't help him. Rotating out doesn't help him. Uh limiting RPO doesn't help him. I think all of those things hurt him and the type of quarterback he can be. Um, I talked to somebody last week that that knows Peyton pretty well and said, look, the guy didn't the guy didn't forget how to play quarterback. He played right. a lot of years at Michigan State, um, had a lot of production there, some really good games. You don't just show up here with 6,000 career yards and some nice games against um, some Big Ten opponents and things like that. Um, I mean, he went down to Miami a couple of years ago and threw four touchdowns and no picks, 300 something yards. I mean, you don't do that and then come here and then just forget yeah. it. So well, it's and, just finding mm-hmm. a way to, to – it's really – they got to commit to what they did on Saturday against State or not. I think if they commit to it, I think you set Peyton up to have some success. If you don't, you know, we could see more of the same. Well, you can't <clears> – as a, as a coach, as an offensive coordinator <clears throat> or a defensive coordinator – most importantly, as a head coach, you can't be scared of your own shadow. You go back and you go back and look at you go back and look at some of the decisions they have made to to slow the tempo. Well, logically, that would tell you that they are they are trying to do their best to protect the defense to to keep them off the field um, and and do whatever. Well, <clears throat> that's that's all fine and good but not if it's to the detriment of the production of the offense. If there there's look, man, there's, there's stress to playing quarterback. It, it is, it, it is what it is. I mean, you, you've got to produce, if you don't produce, there's somebody else that will, I don't care who it is. And if you need to play up tempo pace offense in order for that position to be successful, do it. Don't, don't, Cut your nose off to spite your face. If the the beauty of a paced offense, one is it keeps everybody, you know, on their heels. But the difficulty of a pace offense is it is it is it is required that you sustain drives. Like if you don't, 
you give yourself about a couple of three and outs where you may be burned a minute off the clock, your defense is going to be sucking eggs. And then that means the offense is not doing what they're supposed to do. So that that's just the pressure of that style of offense. And I'm like you, I, you, you either, you either ride with that or you, or you totally change your philosophy. You can't just dabble in pace this week or pace this quarter or not. Let's slow it down this quarter or not this quarter. I, I just, you go, you go with what the strength is of the guy calling the shots. And in this instance, I quite frankly think, I think all the quarterbacks in the, in the QB room, I think they are more well suited to a faster paced offense because it allows them to get into a rhythm and they can capitalize on a deficiency from the defense. Well, it'll be interesting to see one of the things I wrote about on the website in the in the three two one that's up on Monday morning is, you know, one of the questions is will he will will freeze um hold firm to the pace and being aggressive, or will he revert back? I mean, I think we've heard a lot of comments the last couple of weeks about I think he's torn on what to do. They made a decision going into the Mississippi State game. They did it, it worked out well. So is he going to stay committed to it for the rest of the year or is it just a flash in the pan where he stays committed to it until Peyton has a couple bad drives and then he overthinks it again and we get back into rotating. That's been kind of one of my things. It's like, you just, you got to commit to it. I think you've got some opponents that you should commit to it. Vanderbilt and Arkansas don't have the offense that should scare you like Georgia or LSU where you're like, boy, I got to protect my defense even though that's a debatable thing as well. though They don't have the offenses where you should, I think, be overly concerned about that. So we'll see if Freeze and, and, and Montgomery, but it's mostly Freeze's call, stays committed yeah. to being aggressive. What do you expect these last four games? I'm kind of with you. I think, I mean, look at what Vanderbilt is. Look at what Arkansas is. And I know Auburn's not a world beater. But I'm looking at it going Auburn should be seven and four going into the Iron Bowl. I think that's the expectation, right? I I, I totally agree. You know that <clears throat> I know this sounds arrogant, but it's Vandy. I don't care. It's Vandy. You, you, there's there's not a kid, there's not a kid on that roster that if they were offered a scholarship to Auburn, they would have chosen Vandy over Auburn. So that, that's just it. Auburn should win that ball game. I don't I don't presume that we will encounter or Auburn will encounter any questions revolving around the pacing. I think they're going to keep pace. They're going to, they're going to continue to go upbeat offensively, defensively. They're going to be fine. They've got a couple of playmakers at the receiver position, but offensively Vandy has struggled. Um, the difficulty there is just getting excited about a game in Vandy. You know, it's, it's a, the entire the entire stadium's under construction. I think they're jumbotrons hanging by a crane. To, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe Auburn's locker room is a tent. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. The, the game that I am, in all honesty, really concerned about is Arkansas. Uh, just strictly because of them at the quarterback position. They have really struggled on the offensive line. Really, really bad. But Jefferson's special, man. I mean, he is he is a kid that can make something happen at any point in time. He's so difficult to defend against because he's difficult to bring down. And that is a long trip, dude. That is a that is a difficult road trip that really gets everybody off their game. That's the game, in my opinion, that if if Hugh Freeze and Philip Montgomery are going to revert back to trying something differently. And, and slow the pace down to have your offense be your best defense, that's the game I would be fearful of it happening. And I don't think it's even necessary. But I do believe, just like you, I think Auburn wins against Vandy. I think they win against Arkansas. I think they win the cupcake game in a few weeks. And then Auburn shows up at 7-4, and four and and knock on wood, I think, I think Alabama will come into that ball game with two losses because I think LSU beats Alabama this weekend in Tuscaloosa. So it it stands to be one for the ages, Hope. 
uh, it's going to be one that really tips the scales one way or the other. And of all places to play, if it's in Jordan Hare, man, I always give Auburn a fighting chance. Yeah, I think I think you come in there winning four games in a row. <clears throat> I think the crowd, the fans this year have been <clears throat> unbelievable. Yeah, um, the Sanford game, I remember being shocked. I'm like, wow, I didn't expect. I mean, you know, um, and most places will not have the atmosphere that you had against Mississippi State when you're zero and four in the league and a first year coach. Um, most places, <clears throat> I mean, there's just a handful of places that are going to have the kind of atmosphere you had on Saturday against Mississippi State. A handful of, of elite, historic programs will do that, but that's it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that Iron Bowl could be, could be a special one. I'm kind of with you in Arkansas. You got KJ Jefferson. Could be chilly. You know, November there. If you know, just it could be one of those games where um, it could get. Uh, it could get um, tricky. I wrote it about it on the site. It, it's there's there's a little bit of 2009 vibes. You, you have you have that team. That team went to LSU, got blown out. That team lost to Georgia by a touchdown. Um, that team won seven games in the regular season. <clears throat> rolled into that Iron Bowl at home, nearly knocked them off. Um, that team had more veteran SEC experience. The portal didn't exist. They had. You know, that's what allowed that 2010 team to happen. Obviously, can, but there's a ton of seniors, a ton of juniors on that 2009 team. So, but but similar similar vibes. An, a, a new offensive coordinator with this up tempo thing um, that that worked well against a lot of teams, but struggled against some elite teams. Um, a feisty defense. We didn't even talk about that, but I think the defense is playing um, really well. There, you know, they're a touchdown better than what they were last year with basically. The same talent. I mean, my, minus Derek Hall, minus Colby Wooden, minus Owen Papo, toss in Jalen McLeod, you know, toss in a few depth guys like Justin Rogers and you know, Larry Nixon. Asante's played well. A lot of the same secondary, but similar people minus two dudes who got drafted <clears throat> in Hall and Wooden. And the defense is a touchdown better than they were a year ago. Just a few points off of somebody like AM who's littered with uh four and five stars. So Ron Roberts, we we haven't we've probably done him a disservice this year because the offense has been such a mess that yeah. we haven't talked about him enough. Um he, he's getting he's getting a lot out of that group. Yeah. Um all right. Well, let's uh I'll tell you what, let's have you back on here in a couple of weeks. So Auburn goes to Vanderbilt, Arkansas, New Mexico State. Maybe we'll do a pre-iron bowl. Um pod and get your thoughts heading into that game hopefully auburn's got seven wins and um with a with an unbelievable opportunity um that'll be a good one no matter what alabama's defense is fantastic um but auburn's defense has been good enough that they should keep them in that game and and you know freeze is going to stay up night and day preparing for that one to try to pull that off so that'll be a that'll be a, a fun one um i'm heading up to nashville should be uh should be a good game. I think it's 3 p.m. kick. Vanderbilt had been competitive until this. Honestly, they had been competitive in some games, somewhat competitive until Ole Miss. I, they, they just they didn't even show up. Yeah, um, in, the, yeah. in the Ole Miss game, um, but they're they're capable of doing a few things offensively. So we'll see if Auburn can keep the momentum going on offense and not let this be a don't let this thing become tricky in the third quarter. That don't don't play around like that. So, all right, dude. Um, Appreciate you coming on, man. Absolutely, brother. I'm happy to be here anytime. Y'all uh, y'all have a great week. Travel safe and more damn. We will. Shout out to Session Cocktail. Appreciate them being a part of the show. Go check them out on Magnolia Avenue. Great sponsor of the show. Um, and we'll come back in a couple of days. Make sure you go to AuburnLive.com. Subscribe to the site. Check out all of our football recruiting coverage. Basketball is about to get going. Got an exhibition game this week. And Baylor coming up. Um and then go to the YouTube page and subscribe there as well. Turn on notifications, please. That really helps us. And uh, that'd be awesome. Appreciate everybody for joining us. For Ben, I'm Justin. We'll see you next time. Bye.